Greetings from Mel. Greetings from Sam. It is our pleasure to have you with us for another BOOK podcast moment. BOK, our book, also known as Building Our Own Knowledge, is a co-created cloud for interrogating, finding, making, and sharing experiences and knowledge on our own terms. This podcast is brought to you by the labor of love of book working group members Sim Mendes and Melisande Varro. The music carrying us through is by book working group member and commissioned artist Samir Saunders. Samir brought their sonic waves to its final form by reading All About Love, New Visions by Bell Hooks. We thank our loving ancestors for using our beings as vessels. Mm. We hope you wind our way with this DIY podcast as much as we do. Welcome to the BOOK book podcast, book uh, building our own knowledge. It's Sim here, Sim Mendes, uh, books artist liaison and occasional host and facilitator. Um, and uh, I feel like, yeah, let's just get into introductions now, actually. Last time uh, Mel asked us for our um sun moon and rising signs and what was the other question like what is important to you what do you care about what do you care about but this was a question from uh uh hang linton mm. so maybe we can carry on like yeah added, adding on the okay okay so i'll start the introductions and then i'll pass to um ibra who is our guest today and um and then he'll pass it on to mel so me my name is sim i'm an airy sun pisces moon sagittarius rising and um what do i care about um today and over the past weeks i care about um conflict resolution i care about um collective compassion i care about how we um sort of uh deal with interpersonal conflict um on a micro level that can then like influence the macro um and how uh rage can be used in useful ways but also um it can be justified but also knowing that we can still balance it out with compassion too so that's me Ibra I'll pass to you so you can introduce yourself what you do um your sun moon rising if you know them and also what do you care about I think there was another question as well, or oh, maybe I'm like tripping, but I will, answer, <laughs> I will answer that, but I remember there was another question already. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, my name is Ibrahim, Sun, Leo, Moon, Taurus, Rising, Scorpio. Um, what do I care about? I was listening to you so carefully that I couldn't think about an answer, so mm -hmm. I have to do it now. But I must say that conflict resolution is something I'm I'm really considering because I've um, in the past and recent past, no matter how I see myself in those perhaps. Uh, the position of the, the the right and the wrong person in those conflicts, um, I believe that I've caused uh, quite some harm. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's quite easy to point fingers and be like, okay, this happened, uh, it shouldn't have happened, that person is responsible, so on and so forth. Even if we are not engaging in issues, even if we just witness them, I, I don't know. Um, mm. And so, yeah, something uh, that I care about, perhaps be less harmful in the way I interact with people and what I, I say. And mm. yeah, that's, that's something I care about. Mm. Um, that's it. I don't know. Introducing myself, I'm uh, I'm a human being. I was born in France, but my family came from the Gambia before I was born. Um, right now, I do photography and uh, filmmaking and writing and teaching, and that's it. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mel, if you, if you want to answer those questions as well. Well, but, but since that's quite a lot, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking all the way through your books and introductions, like none of you mentioned Mal <laughs> as like something or someone you care about. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, so, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> that was just a test, but right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm Mel, Melissandre Varin. I'm a co-parent, uh, a lover, someone that is uh, still deeply in love. Uh, I'm someone that uh, is very much into growing. Uh, all kinds of relationships with uh, the plants in front of me, uh, with Sim, with uh, Ibrahim. Um, I'm very intrigued by how I, as a human, human, non-human, and more than human and entity and multiple thingy, like maybe a tentacle, like something with tentacles. What is it again? You said tentacular before. Is that the word? Yeah, tentacle. but who has tentacles again? Yeah, an octopus. Octopus. <laughs> but uh, I have more than eight. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I feel I, I'm very intrigued and obsessed and passionate about uh, observing and nurturing and nourishing relationships and also cutting them somehow um, <laughs> when it's not healthy uh, anymore. And also, I'm being I'm someone that is being cut from relationships as well sometimes uh, to mm. bounce back from what you were saying. If I'm like, mm. yeah, yeah, um, I'm also someone that uh, has caused harm, uh, and uh, perhaps has been a uh, well for sure has been abusive in certain situation, and also someone that felt very comfortable for a period of time to point others from mm. the finger, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I feel like I'm someone that is uh, on a healing process. The healing process is on and will be on uh, after this lifetime, per perhaps, but uh, it has not always been on. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm feeling very grateful for, for that. Uh, yeah, I said about it. Yeah, I said that I was an artist or something. Uh, your big three? Yeah, I didn't say that I was an artist. Oh, I should say that I'm an artist. <laughs> Looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> we all are, don't worry. Send emails. <laughs> you can contact me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and your sign. Yeah, anyway, so yeah, my sign. Uh, sun, uh, Pisces Sun, uh, and then double Libra. And also, I have uh, no, I should have said too much about myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, thank you, Terry. <laughs> um, so yeah, like let's just get into it. So, um, Ibra, do, do you want to talk about um, your extract and like what made you pick this extract and just a little intro into it before you read it? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, for the people who listen to this podcast, I must say that Mel and Seymour like, have matching outfits <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and matchy, matching, uh, how do you say, like, hairstyle. Like, so, <laughs> really nice to see. I wish you could see that. <laughs> it's our uniform. <laughs> uh, also, apologies for our French accents, because then you get two Francophone people speaking. Maybe it's annoying, but that's life. <laughs> so also my extract is in French, but I will translate it afterwards. <laughs> So the writer is Amadouan Pateba, who used to be uh, a writer, historian, so on and so forth, just uh, someone who loved culture from Mali or what used to be Mali at the time and Sudan um, in West Africa. And he was born on the year 1900, so right at the turn of the 20th century. Uh, and then this book and this quote, now the quote I chose because I was reading the book recently, and it's a novel, um, and that's an autobiographical novel, and the first out of like a series of uh, books. 
So he's talking about his childhood, but in the first chapters, uh, he's perhaps um, giving insight about the people that uh, used to be before him. So he's going back to his uh, grandfathers and uh, grandmothers and so on and so forth. And in this one quote, I'll read it and then I will explain because maybe it's easier, um, but it's very early in the book. And it says, again, it's gonna be in French before the English. Uh, Sois à l'écoute, disait-on dans la vieille Afrique, tout parle, tout est parole, tout cherche à nous, com à nous communiquer une connaissance. So, so what it says is be um, attentive. Um, and that's what we used to say in ancient Africa because everything speaks, everything is speech and everything attempts to communicate uh, knowledge. And so this quote comes uh, because, um, so in this chapter, he's talking about his um, grandfather from his mother's side and Pate Pulo, that's his name, used to be a shepherd, but also a preacher. And at the time he decided to um, literally leave his community and follow a, a spiritual leader, um, Ella Joma at the time, who was um, establishing a sort of kingdom or an empire in the region. And so he was going on uh, a war campaign in the whole region. And so Patepulo decided that he wanted to join him. And he said, I'm not interested to gain any sort of position or any wealth or anything like that. I just want to be closer to God and I want you to teach me about that. So he followed him and left everything behind, like his family, his um, um, cattle, and so on and so forth. And then um, to, at, some, at some point, uh, the El Ajoma, so the spiritual leader, said, um, it's getting too difficult for us here. Everybody's attacking us. I don't know if we can make it. I want you and my little nephew to go um, further in the country and get some help from other villages so we can uh, defend ourselves. And he said, because his nephew was from the same bloodline and had um, basically the a, a, a better or bigger or more, let's say, prestigious uh, status, than Pate Pulo. Um, he asked um, Pate Pulo to lead his nephew only when they were in bushes, but every time they would come into a city, he had to be under his nephew's uh, guidance. So at some point, they were in one place called Bandiagara, and that's the place where uh, the writer and the author of the novel, uh, Ampanteba, Amadou Ampanteba, uh, was born. So to go back to um, Pate Pulo, Pate Pulo is Ampanteba's grandfather. And so when uh, Pate Pulo was in that, um, literally in the nature, in the bushes in the middle of nowhere, with uh, Tijani, so again, it's a lot of names, but I'm sorry, you're gonna follow that point. Um, when they were in the village, uh, in the bush, he asked um, Tijani, uh, Tijani asked, sorry, um, no, Patebulo asked Tijani to sit uh, under a tree, but a tree that would let the light uh, hit him and the sun as well. And so the reason why he said that to him was that um, if you sit uh, in the wrong place and in the place where you will only um, be under the shades, it means that you are no longer working, the work is done, you can actually rest and relax. But if you go sit under that other tree that lets the light passes through, um, you have more chances to 
uh, stay alert and put and, and understand that the work is not done. And so, um, again, Tijani accepted to follow his order according to, again, what that spiritual leader asked them to do. And then this um, Patipulo told him, because you listen to me, uh, you, you will become um, the leader of that region in the near future, and you're going to establish a kingdom here, and you will be able to lead people um, for a certain amount of time. And basically, that was a prophecy. Four years later, he came back, he established that kingdom and reigned for like 20 years or something. And the deal was that um, uh, Patepulo asked Tijani to, once he will establish himself in that region, to grant him that bit of land for him to build a compound and have a house for himself. And that's the house in which Anpateba, the author of that novel, was born. Um, and so that quote basically um, tries to emphasize that um, certain part of reality that we live and experience and that we believe as under our own control uh, cannot be uh, explained only through metaphysical and social interactions, but things that are beyond ourselves because we belong to a reality that is multidimensional. And that simple act of sitting under that tree as opposed to this other one uh, is for him in that uh, situation, the author of the book, uh, the reason why actually that guy was able to establish that kingdom and for him to even come alive in that space and for his entire destiny literally uh, to, to have been what it was. Yeah. So yeah, the quote was, to me, very simple, but yeah, I think it's also something I'm trying to apply in my life, like being attentive to all sorts of signs, especially when things don't work and it, go back, it goes back to your point of like um, resolving conflict. I think sometimes it's also good to like, to me, resolving conflict is not necessarily finding um, a sort of um, a, a, a place of, um, resolution, but more so a place of peace. So, okay, we disagree and let us come to no antagonism, uh, even if we are not on the same page. So we don't necessarily need to understand one another, but just agree that we are not fighting uh, and we are not gonna cause harm in the future by you know, um, just talking on somebody or just, you know, it's, it's very difficult already. So, yeah, so that was very long. There was a lot of names. <laughs> Maybe the person who can edit that can make sense of it, but that was my quote. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, both are big claps, but I didn't want to make noise. Uh <laughs> It claps, but on the ends, yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to share the other extracts before going into discussion? Uh, and then we finish with English. <laughs> because my extract is also in French. Okay, I'll, I'll break it up with English and then we finish on French. Um, because the typical Westerner, <laughs> English speaking. And then you can um, do yours. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Okay. Um, yeah, I love how we're sort of like on this sort of route of like um, ways in which we can cause harm, but also like attentiveness when we like, because being attentive is like through all the senses, you know, it's like the listening, perceiving, um, comprehending, like all of the things. And when you're saying like looking for signs, usually like in the context of say interpersonal relations, it's also like being attentive enough to step outside of ourselves so that like we can 
reach understanding from others you know so like we're stepping out of our world and into someone else's that's also being like attentive and understanding someone else's science anyway yeah I'll share my extract and then we can discuss more um maybe I'll read this one so yeah I'm sort of on this um sorry I'm a little bit sniffly today but uh yeah I was reading um we will not cancel us by um and other dreams of transformative justice by Adrian Marie Brown um and we looked at that in our last book club um and yeah it was something that I visited I think like sometime last year and I think like just all of the things I've been like dealing with going through uh it was really good to like come back to it and see it just in, in a um a new light so yes um so it says and this is from the introduction um I honor all our different attempts at learning to do justice ourselves I respect and learn from righteous anger my own and others I want to punish people too sometimes especially those whom I have survived I'm not above it I don't want to protect those who cause harm or limit the options of survivors I want healing for all I want to bring our attention to patterns that echo and generate harm for survivors and harm doers. I want to bring our attention to what generates healing for those survivors who receive and those who cause harm and the majority who do both. I want to bring our attention to the things we don't yet know how to do. I want to ask us all to commit to abolitionist practice together. I also want to be as brave as those I look up to, those I call teacher. Many of them were willing to speak up when they felt their beloved moments heading in regressive, divisive or capitalist directions, offering perspective and risk belong risking belonging in order to offer some love. That's me. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's very beautiful. Um, <laughs> all those transitions, there's so many transitions uh, coming through towards me right now. And uh, I was thinking while, uh, while you were reading and also while uh, Ibrahim, was, uh, Ibrahim was speaking that, uh, oh, that's, uh, that's interesting because the extract that Ibrahim chose, the book that Ibrahim chose, mm. um, this is from someone that I can already consider as a teacher, mm. but I haven't yet uh, um, uh, been visiting, I haven't yet visited. I haven't I've not yet visited mm. their, their work, mm. but I know it's going to be on my path, but it's just not now. Mm. Uh, I also consider Ibrahim as a teacher. I consider mm. you as a teacher. I joined Mary Brown as a teacher as well. And mm. I gathered loads of knowledge from um, this book that you might know, A Nos Humanité Revolté by Kiemis Ibrahim. Yes, but I never read it. And I also saw some on my list. <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm going to read something, but uh, you because both of your reading they were very grounding and like you know inviting you know <laughs> wiseness in the sense of like okay like give it take a bit give it sometimes and this one is more maybe a, like a change of of pace let's mm. see it's called uh, donner son temps plus jamais <clears throat> impatiente elle sort de l'ascenseur bloquée maintenue au sous-sol incapable d'attendre de contempler l'impasse une minute de plus lui donner son temps, plus jamais, plus jamais, acculé par la faim qui joue la funambule, sur le mur qui la retient prisonnière, elle s'oblige à la déraison. Dans son dos, l'histoire hurle, les échos des marches la poussent à courir, dessiner ses propres escaliers, tracer une courte échelle, pour que d'autres, d'autres emboîtent son pas. Sa voix se lève, pose des bombes sur le plafond de verre. Les mots rebondissent, brisent, un silence qui étrangle. Dans ses poings serrés, le désir de justice et ses doigts ensanglantés effleurent le ciel libéré. Ne plus se taire, chuchoter, ne plus chuchoter, demander, ne plus demander, réclamer, ne plus réclamer, créer. <coughs> I'm just going to translate the, the end as much as I can. <laughs> Whispering instead of being silenced, silenced after the... <laughs> Did you watch it? <laughs> the the Harry and Meghan uh, Oprah interview. Were you mm. silent or were you silenced? <laughs> oh no, I, I I watched that, but I don't remember that. Wow. <laughs> okay, I, so I every time that the translation uh, from French to English comes to come to silent, 
But now it's always silenced now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I get it. Wow. <laughs> that's that's the beauty of translation. You come yeah. to realize so many things. Yeah. So yeah, whispering instead of being silenced, demanding instead of whispering, reclaiming. No, no. Uh, yeah. Uh, wait. No. Uh, reclaiming of instead of demanding and creating instead of reclaiming. Mm. Yeah. That will do. <laughs> so yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah, it's it's, a, it's quite a lot, and it, uh, it's quite nice to see that. Because when you when you said, okay, come up with a quote, or actually you made it easier on 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 me and on us, or the following people on that podcast, because yeah. you said that the quote was not necessarily to be taken from a book, but it could be from a song, and and I really appreciated that because mm-hmm. it's just like acknowledging all the forms of like knowledge, which is right um but in both yeah your selections i mean yeah i see myself right now uh and and it's very inspiring and i use inspiring because i want to understand that word as uh, being in spirit with people or anything that you witness so yeah and so what you read also just now, Mel, um, uh, is just, I heard about her and because I disconnected with France and a- anything that happened in the country for a long time. And when I reconnected with it a bit, obviously I was looking at black folks who are making work because that's the reason why I disconnected with the place to begin with, because it's like, there's nobody, nothing can happen. This place is just doomed or something and and to see that yeah people are no longer reclaiming or just being silent like that progression of going from this abyss this no man's lawn to actually cr- to create which is the last step that she mentioned or that they mentioned is is the only way uh but then to create is also in a position to destroy uh, which is going back to then your quote, um, um, seem uh, of an Adrian Marie Brown, that's her name, right? Uh, who says that she's always on the precipice, and that's me just um, um, paraphrasing now, of causing harm, but that she has to, you know, negotiate that and understand that okay to create you want to go there because you've been on the other side but you need not to and if you do it's okay to a certain extent it's quite a lot i think it's the whole human drama right there <laughs> yeah definitely like it's so like even between all of the all three like quotes and extracts it feels like whoosh you know like I don't know there's so many mm. things that are sort of like mm. floating through the air because right it's now. emanating yes mm. those are black uh, writers all of them mm. but uh, it, it's emanating from different lands yeah uh, beings with uh, di- different spirits different mm. uh, ancestors following them mm. so it feels very like cacophonic yeah. uh, and uh, at the same time like they uh, <laughs> um like points where mm. there is meeting points between mm. the the three mm. things that are coming from different dimensions. Yeah, and I love how like uh, unknowingly we all picked completely different extracts from different um, parts of the world. Like I think three mm. different continents mm. even. Mm. So it's like yeah, and it, it brings me back to what Ibra was saying of like being in spirit with one another. It's like all of them doing different work but somehow the spirit is sort of like flowing through all of them and causes like that connection yeah um, because they all uh although like i'm not sure i'm not an expert so <laughs> maybe i'm going to simplify but they seem to be all three mm-hmm. um have been making work uh towards the road towards emancipation mm. so it's, it feels quite uh, in the sound of it of the free readings very uh there is something 
quite liber uh, liberatory, liberatory mm, mm. in all three of them. But for, as I was saying, like different frequencies, mm. different pace, different rhythms. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question. So when you read, because yeah, reading, I don't know, it requires like, logistical skills almost I feel like <laughs> because you want to you want to live you want to survive you want to provide for yourself and you know make it um, and it becomes very hard these days um, but when you do manage to read um, do you do you do it with a certain intention and if so what intention and then how do you use that in your life and your work <laughs> I'm wondering because like I said initially okay to be able to read whatever you do read mm -hmm. uh, takes a lot of to me at least uh, effort because you need to plan or have a moment or create a moment mm -hmm. uh, for it to be part of your life uh, yeah. and okay it can be more or less important depending on what you do with your life but mm -hmm. if you manage to do so i'm just curious to know uh how do you discriminate in your reading so what is the intention mm -hmm. when you read and how do you then use your reading in your life or how do you share it yeah it's a good question yeah one i was uh pausing because there was a, a siren going past so i was like oh i don't want to unmute it too like early because it's like Wee! um yeah for me I think it's like the way that I read and the intentions that I ha I put into reading has shifted maybe over the past year or so because before that I was pretty much always or for the most part like fiction heavy I love novels I love a good romance I love anything that sort of detaches me from like <laughs> this world um, and puts me into another one um, and then I sort of started to transition into trying to read a fiction and a nonfiction, maybe at the same time or phases um, in and out. So that like, if I read nonfiction, because I'm so used to reading fiction, it's harder to read nonfiction because I feel like I have to go from beginning to end. Um, whereas it's different and you don't actually necessarily have to. Um, but I think whatever I'm thinking about. And I think it's really useful that um, Mel had the, the book library at our place um, because when I'm thinking about something or pondering on something or a thought that comes into my mind, usually there's like some reading that can almost partly touch upon what I'm starting to muse upon. Um, so yeah, recently thinking about conflict and stuff and then I picked up that book um, and when I was doing a commission, but not necessarily just for the work of the commission, just widely thinking about um, the uses or the exploration that representation and identity politics has on like us furthering. Um, and so, yeah, and then I reached out to Fred Moten who extended <laughs> a hand. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that fully answers the question, but I think it's sort of like, I like to ask a question and then I like to seek something that is going to help me find the answer, you know? Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's quite beautiful. Definitely having the communal library at home for some time has been uh, incredible. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, it goes back to what you were saying, Ibrahim, in terms of like um, allowing, being at or creating moments to be attentive to to receive knowledge you know for me I do that uh, with reading but uh, so I must say that like maybe for like almost a year I didn't read like that uh, anymore because I was uh, into my obsession was like on the what is it reality tv things like that I just had to like take a break and just like go there and understand more of what people were <laughs> doing there and uh, I feel like I've learned a lot you want to yeah yeah um, but then in terms of like not only being spiritually guided for work, but being spiritually guided in general, I feel like my ancestors are pushing me, uh, are often pushing me towards certain passage of a book or towards certain authors. Uh, and I do consider 
you know, although like obviously they don't consider me like that, but like I do consider authors as part of my sense of like community uh, because it goes back to, you know, conflicts and, and everything. Yes, you can be disappointed by uh, beings you are physically in community with, but I've never been disappointed by uh, the authors that are part of my community of knowledge, you know? Uh, so this is a constant. So I, yeah. I think that, uh, but also like reading, you know, posts on Instagram or whatever, you know, this is reading as well. Um, I really appreciated this person that was like saying that, you know, like when people read um, uh, marketing outside, they, they, this is also an act of reading. It's not only like reading books or whatever. Um, so, yeah, I quite like textures in general and uh, textuality that is not confined within words. So reading is like also me looking at your face, trying to understand, uh, you know, your emotions or things like that. And then like uh, teasing you to get to know more, you know, this is reading too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about this, but that's true. Um, well, wait, just a second as well. Do you want to, because you mentioned that you had the communal library. What was that? Yeah, so um, when Mal, I'm just plugging in the laptop. When Mao um, put or like curated and like founded book, <laughs> building out our knowledge, um, they also had their installation, which was the caravan, which was sort of like an art library rest healing station. Um, and so like part of what they did as well was um, collating readings from like black, black authors, artists, um, novelists, etc so like when we had the caravan like people could just come and visit like rest because there was a space to just like lie down and like read or you know um so yeah so now that we don't have the caravan anymore um the library has like come into our possession <laughs> not, not our possession but uh, it's made here and yeah. um, we're going to like disperse uh, knowledge mm -hmm. uh, in the coming month yeah but now my <laughs> turn to ask you a question um uh, yeah, so my first question is going to be, um, dun, 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 who was waiting for you to be born? Um, wow, okay, so I guess before the conception, uh, it was my grandmother because she's in, I mean, she's the, the reason why my mom got to marry, at least in the Gambia, my dad. And then um, the plan was for my mom to come to France and therefore become a support, financial support for her and the rest of the family back in the Gambia. But children in the Gambia are considered um, to be like your heritage, but in all sense of what an heritage can be. Um, and then they are supposed to help you as soon as they become uh, able to do so. Um, so in that sense, my grandmother, by marrying my mom with my dad and then sending them or sending her to France, um, was expecting my mom to help her, but also to conceive children who down the line will be part of that um, heritage that I mentioned. And so she was the first, then my dad. So that's quite, if you think about it a lot, because people besides the, the first person, AKA the womb who was supposed to conceive me uh, were expecting me uh, before. So it's a lot of pressure, I guess. Um, but yeah, my dad was second. Um, because he married my mom and also had already children before her and wanted children from my mom. And then my mom had to expect me in a way, but not necessarily 
um, with the original intent that a human being should um, in the ideal scenario. So I would say these three people uh, here. Can I, shall I return the question back to you? <laughs> you really want to be a host. <laughs> 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 yeah, are you asking lots of questions. <laughs> um, I can answer very um briefly and um quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I, I don't think <laughs> any of my parents or family were waiting for me to be born. Um, which sounds really sad, but like, yeah, if anything, they were hoping that I wasn't, which is like, ah, but um, I would say certain spirits and deities that have sort of like followed me on my life journey um were waiting for me to be born for me to fulfill a larger purpose um which is also in turn great for me because it helps me step into like a new lease of life and understand what living actually means um outside of outside of you know this realm but also outside of like how I was raised the culture slash cult slash whatever um so it allows me to expand myself um outside of the people I suppose who <laughs> pushed back on not waiting for me to be born um yeah that's my mm -hmm. brief answer Oh, <laughs> you got very dark suddenly. No, but yeah, I guess also you said you talk not about... your face because I think your laptop uh, is like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, perhaps, <laughs> but yeah, you spoke about like spirits and deities. How do you know? Um, that's a good question. I think. <laughs> Um, only in the past few years was it made like clear to me in terms of like how I'm able to divinate um, and how I'm able to listen. Um, I always liked to think I was a really good active listener in the like physical realm, but also I had to really work that muscle of like listening to all realms. You know how you were saying being attentive to the signs? The more that you become attentive as long as you're still grounded because um spiritual psychosis is real um being attentive whilst being grounded allows those things to come up more and the more that you listen the more that they i suppose bring to you mm. um yeah. now i would like to call uh if you don't mind if i'm to to reread your passage just mm. now i think it's gonna bring lots of enlightenment mm. well, thank you as well Sim, because in a way i'm asking you the question because i'm asking myself that question mm -hmm. um so soit à l'écoute disait-on dans la vieille afrique tout parle tout est parole tout cherche à nous communiquer une connaissance so be attentive um that's what we used to say in ancient africa everything speaks everything is speech everything attempts to communicate a knowledge damn <laughs> is your answer <laughs> <laughs> you okay know? yeah i'm gonna briefly say so who was waiting for mal to be born uh uh so i'm not going to name you both of you because like you know <laughs> <laughs> um i think you know like i think at this precise moment in time i'm gonna say the air the air was waiting for me to be born i feel like i receive a lot of uh, uh support message comfort sense of love and redirection, you know, deviation from the wind. Mm. Um, and often the wind pushes me to water, to the water. So I will say the wind. Um, I don't necessarily, I'm musing on this idea that maybe, you know, this uh, way of like thinking of ascendant and descendants uh, might be infused by uh, Eurocentric ways of uh, seeing time. 
And so I'm thinking that, you know, instead of like my parents uh, waiting for me, um, especially like from my side, uh, but that, sorry, from my dad's side, uh, there, there is this idea of like, you know, building your retirement plan <laughs> uh, with your children. But uh, I think that uh, for me, it's more uh, Yunnan, the stillbirth, uh, stillbirthed uh, ancestor that uh, crossed path with me, that was waiting for me to be born. Or like, it was like, a, I don't know, like, uh, how to say this in... Anyway, yeah, I said the wind, I said the uh, Yunnan, I said Aeol. Um, yeah, and yeah, and my thoughts as well, you know, just like the thoughts that I have, like, they're quite uh, trippy. <laughs> I feel like they were waiting for me to be born. <laughs> they were waiting, specific yeah. brain. <laughs> so then uh, it goes to the next question mm -hmm. uh, that maybe is more like a, a prompt. Uh, to anchor in the to be present, a prompt to be present. So who's who is currently who is holding you tight for you to grow? Who is holding you tight for you to grow? Mm. Uh, it's two two part answer, but it's, I mean I always I think the person I'm talking about all the time is my mom. Like there is no other way like uh, yeah, that's it. it. Can be boring or whatever, but that's the way I admire this person a lot. Not just because she's my mom, but because I like I as I get older, I really see her as a human being. I can actually it empowers the relationship because I'm no longer stuck into you know the sort of communication or antecedent that will perhaps. Um, shape the way I read the situation and I can be more objective but um, we have a lot of discussions these days uh, when it comes to my life uh, I must say that she had me when she was a teenager so the age difference between us is not that big so we're getting older almost like simultaneously and so she's been telling me kind of like the same thing since I was young, but younger, I wasn't able or willing to listen. And now she's like saying the same. So she's asking me or she's perhaps suggesting that I should be living my life for myself, you know, <laughs> and not um, always living to please people around me um, and that's quite a paradox because she taught me that if you want to live a meaningful life you need to care for the people around you so it's more so understanding to what extent you do it and um, so in that sense her allowing me or like holding that mirror because I think, yeah, people, different people allow you to see different part of yourself, but um, in her capacity, she, and she always says to me, as your mom, I cannot, uh, I cannot harm you. And in a way, it's, it, it can be, we can, we can talk about that, right? But in a way, it's more like the, the maternal instinct of, I'm here to basically hold you and uh, protect you. So um, if I'm telling you to you know, be more mindful of how you use your energy and how many people you invite into your life, it's because I see that you are not necessarily able to see that for yourself. And so then that allows me to actually hold myself tight in a way that I've never done it before. Because like I said, I wouldn't make sense of anything if there wasn't that 
other person that will tell me at the end of the day, oh, thank you for doing this. And oh, therefore, this is how I find, you know, purpose for myself. Now I'm like, but you know, you get, you're getting older and you, what is it that you've done for yourself that you can literally look at and, and, and be sort of content with, you know, and that doesn't involve like another person because that's also the sort of maybe savior complex in a way. Like, um, and uh, there isn't much, you know, I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, you, you, you've done stuff and, but can you, can you think of one thing that you've done from beginning to end that is not about your ego or you know material gains or whatever but just just like a fulfilling of your spirit and i'm like damn <laughs> i'm unable to actually say that so i'm on that path right now um and i think another sort of quote slash something I'm just paraphrasing from a book that I don't even remember, but that stays with me um, is this thing of, okay, if you set goals, you somehow can't reach places because life in itself, but also the nature of setting goals um, is uh, more or less, um, how do you call it? It's, it there's there's a temporary value to that and also a like if we if we objectivize this thing it's 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 a distant um object um that you have no certitude about whereas building systems for yourself in which you can evolve on a daily basis and really learn, but also embrace grief, but also happiness and all sorts of things uh, that allows you to become real. Um, and then that will answer um, this question of what is it that I'm doing to fulfill my spirit? So on a daily basis now, I, I want to, yeah, I want to be closer to that self, which is a scary thing because then I have to go back to a place of almost like loneliness or I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's a mess, but that's always a mess. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, you got me there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I feel like don't want to like maybe it's avoidance mm -hmm. but I like I want to I would like to transition to the third question because I started to open up uh, too many things thinking of like what is this question that uh, Ibrahim raised you know mm -hmm. what is it that you're doing to fulfill your spirit so I mm -hmm. would like to uh, to transition to the third question uh, avoidance maybe um probably more than that <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean yeah i mean just as like a ending comment to that um yeah well yeah i don't know if enough it can be summarized in like an ending comment to be fair because i think it's stuff that journeys that we're all on in completely different ways and also like when you're saying about how you're fulfilling this without ego involved as well and how we just like yeah like continue this journey but also I think it's sort of like not necessarily always holding ourselves accountable but always regrounding ourselves or always reminding ourselves to touch base of like where are you going right now and is this the direction that is um, not necessarily ego less because I think ego is important to a degree because it allows us to be assertive and it allows us to like have some level of self-worth to a degree um, as long as it's healthy but also knowing that like our spirit purpose isn't fueled by us as an individual um yeah so i'll leave it there do you want to propose the third question i would like to offer the third question ibrahim mm -hmm. that is um how do we build loving environments 
in the arts too. In the arts, yeah, that's that's a very <laughs> murky <laughs> place. <laughs> Like honestly, like it's quite sad, but the, the more I progress into the art world or industry, the more disillusioned I grow because it's an it's a it's a ruthless industry. The other day I was on YouTube watching an interview from like 50 Cent, and he was saying uh, you know, business is is the worst when it comes to uh individuals uh sense of uh, ethics uh why because he was making a comparison with the street he was like in the streets at least you go you get into a beef you fight you know and both parties know you know what happened if you lost you go back and you hide or whatever you can retaliate or whatever but in business people do that in your face they dissimulate their tactics they sort of humiliate you like when money comes into the thing it becomes i guess like people become crooks like and and i think that's that's the worst when it comes to uh acknowledging another person's sense of humanity because especially when it comes to, you know, folks from migrant background, you know, people from working class background or whatnot, who really like bet their lives like on the daily, like to make this art thing. And they work for people who like, you know, neglect them or underpay them or try and like, finesse them and and they don't understand that we're talking about it's a matter of life and death like you know you can find yourself in the streets in a second because that person did this and then that's when i'm like it be i'm becoming disillusioned and i'm also thinking about uh folks being our elders i'm like how could you because you've been a young person too you know what it is to to you know hustle and and try and make a space for yourself in this uh but for you to yeah have access that place of being a gatekeeper and and then just instrumentalizing people young people because of their energies and ignorance it, it yeah that's 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 where i'm like where is the love but and then if we talk about love i would say you don't necessarily need to um i would say even like value somebody to to have a sense of uh you know respect and 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 base level like uh care you know um and 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 so i don't even know if okay in terms of like the idea word if we will reach that place when it comes to the art industries um but what i try to do um is and it goes back to the question before uh if i have an opportunity i see how many people i can put on that opportunity um, and then who uh, needs it the most, not necessarily who is the best. Um, why? Because the best might have more chances tomorrow, whereas the person who needs it the most can become the best tomorrow, but they need to get that opportunity to get build confidence or whatnot. Um, and to just keep going as well, like financial, I don't know. But uh, so then that's being, that means that you need to always be on the lookout for other people's work and then stay in touch with them. And that when you do this, you, you do not um, only work on your own craft, but that balance is also very difficult and that's where I struggled a bit. And this year, actually, um, I decided that sort of contradict everything I've said so far, but I, I decided to focus on my craft because so far it was always um, fulfilling somebody else's uh, expectation or somebody else's project. And now I'm like, what is it that I want to do? And can I, in doing so, still 
practice what I actually preach. Um, so again, staying alert and, and, and watchful and careful because it's very, it's a very, I wouldn't, actually, I wouldn't, I would, I swear to God, I wouldn't even recommend anybody to enter the art world. I'll be like, choose something else, maybe. <laughs> like, because <laughs> like, it's just too much. Like, um, yeah, at the end of the day. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that is completely fair and valid. <laughs> yeah, I feel like, yeah, so much of what you said is so poignant. I feel like even you saying, you know, like giving opportunities uh, to people who need it rather than who is the best. And it's interesting because I think I've had mentors in the past that have given me opportunities that I didn't feel I was like qualified enough to do. But then knowing that like, I love seeing when like mentors or people in a, in a, I'd say more dominant position give opportunities to people who like you can see that they're just trying they're just trying it out and there's such a heavy expectation to be excellent and you know whatever this black excellence fucking bullshit but like yeah sometimes it's okay to like just step into a role and just like try it out do you know what I mean as long as no one is being harmed in that do you know what I mean I think um there's this expectation to have like 10 million years of experience but you can't get to that place without first someone taking a chance on you um so I think it is really meaningful yeah well I'm going to murmurate on this uh you know giving opportunity to those who need it the most rather than like those you feel that they are most most qualified um for it but I think I, I want to um bring a a, a cheeky point in that because <laughs> You know, it's like also in a way a strategy that has been used by um, uh, black people, but like non-white people in general. When it or on non-white people, when it came to you know saying like, okay, representation matters. So since uh, you've been subject to systemic systemic um, uh, oppression, I'm going to give you uh this opportunity whether you can can do it or not is just mm. like you... but I feel like there's a difference between yeah yeah but, uh, no, no. <laughs> I know I know it's trying to be cheeky you know like I I hear like the need to practice mutual aid and solidarity in the arts too like I think it's mm. like a very uh important reminder mm. for myself too mm. um what was did I want to say what did I want to say before that <laughs> I chose to be cheeky. It was not the right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, oh. I don't know. I'm gonna have to take a bit. Okay. <laughs> no, but the, the the thing that I'm hearing in in what you said, I I also agree with that. Like I'm 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 actually quite like demanding when it comes to my work and very precious and all of that. You know. Mm. So it's more so. Also understanding that at the end of the day, if everything matters, nothing really does. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, you do something and then the next day you forgot about it. But in that event, what, what, what does that allow for, you know, to unfold? Like, as opposed to, uh, did we do on paper the best thing as in according to who to begin with and are we still playing that game of like this is the canon and then everything else needs to position itself according to that and then that's when like you have gatekeeping and that's just boring because mm -hmm. it's like and then we all play the game of okay, you need to send a bio, okay, do some name dropping out there, maybe you get the funding, maybe you get this thing. And it's just time, like you said, Sim, how do you even get to that place of having that experience to justify the next gig? You haven't even entered that like, people dismiss you on the basis of not having that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I mean, like so far, I I'm ignorant, but I'm I'm just seeing like it's been years, and I keep on seeing the same names, like doing the same things and going mm -hmm. to the same place, and I'm like, guys, even you, like, aren't you tired of like being the same folks? Mm -hmm. uh, and and like I have a, somebody who 
I met in the last residency I was part of. His name is Matthias. And hi, Matthias, if you even hear this. <laughs> but it was, it was not, it was not into the art world. Like in that residency, it was his first experience. And he was saying the art world, like I don't understand because this place is too small and there isn't enough money to fight like that. And to me, it was just, yeah, that's it. Like, go become a YouTuber, perhaps that's better. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> like, go, go, go do OT uh, in a coffee shop. Like, I don't know, man. Like, you know. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, you definitely like <laughs> back on the uh, track I was on because <laughs> the end, and especially in the arts, all of this is like just fiction, and sometimes yeah. we forget it. Yeah, and uh, also like other people take you in their fiction, their own uh, way of writing history and so on, and then suddenly like you caught into like a dimension that you didn't <laughs> like, subscribe to. <laughs> so there is lots of like unconsented <laughs> <laughs> traveling uh, mm -hmm. into uh, other people's fiction. But uh, what is for sure is that uh, going back to your initial point, Ivaim, is that like while like people are building their building, growing their fictions and so on, some uh, some 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 of us and some people are just like in real need mm -hmm. of cash just right now. Mm -hmm. So you know you can like put on your best party, opening events and uh, and so on, but like, mm. you know, like we, we, we still live. Okay, you can mm. say like there is different sort of worlds and so we use worlds instead of world, but like, mm. well, uh, mm. at the end of the day, you know, like some of us like sleep on the street and others uh, mm. do not. So mm. what do you do about that, you know? Yeah, it's interesting, like uh, when you put it into the context or framework of sort of like mutual aid and like those with more positioning within the arts, extending opportunities. And like, I know all of us in this space already know like the difference between, you know, what you were saying about like, um, oh, because you're like quote unquote a minority or like whatever. So then here's an opportunity versus like, I know that like, this is what you're working towards. And I know that in like, if you had this chance, then you would already be here by now. Therefore, I'm going to extend this to you because like, you're doing the work without even being paid for it. Or you're on this de de developmental <laughs> journey um, without this paid opportunity to get you there. So then like, I have the position to help you get to that point um, rather than like white institutions just like tokenizing and being like, hey, you're a global majority or racialized person. And like, maybe you could do this job, maybe you can't, but like, I don't know any other black people. So like, mm. <laughs> just do the thing. Mm. Um, rather than like actual community work yeah but also like emphasizing uh, on the fact that uh, you know uh, as Ibai was saying yes sometimes it's white institutions and uh, other times like your own mm. people like yeah your, yeah, your yeah. Skin, you know and, like yeah perpetrating expo exploitation yeah. in uh, unethical ways mm -hmm. we were uh, trying to solve all <laughs> issues <laughs> right now I think that um, yeah we have lots of uh, food for thoughts mm -hmm. mm. Um, I'm gonna myself uh, be thinking about all of that and transform the world. <laughs> 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 no, no, what I wanted to say is that uh, I think that um, from like the three questions, what I took uh, as of the forefront is like, you know, having this pocket of time mm -hmm. where you can find or like refine what uh what is it uh, that is for you that is a fulfilling your spirit for you mm. and then having mm. a like mass of uh, beings around you mm. supporting you into do doing that mm. and sometimes it is uh, as uh, uh, a is is uh, taking this uh, this, uh, this uh, step it is by like you know taking a sabbatical sabbatical from mm. uh, supporting others mm. uh, because this is not serving you anymore because like you're out of uh, out of spoons like yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, like to say uh, and you need to regenerate yourself to be a person that care uh, enough about themselves uh, mm. and about their spirits, mm. to be in a position to support others yeah. uh, further down the line. And mm. this is there is nothing linear about it. It's not like you serve someone uh, yeah. like, or other beings all your, of your life. Mm. And now, you know, like what, what's the deviation right now? Yeah. And uh, staying attentive, going back to... Uh, Literally, story. yeah. So I was going to say, like, me taking away, like, the points that Ibrahim sort of touched on is 
bringing it back to this core root of attentiveness and like the more that you listen and pay attention is the more that you can tune into what phase of life you need to step into next is it like a serving role is it like a self-fulfilling role like the purpose and the path that you're winding towards what you say yes to what you say no to like what you feel like you're aligned with all of it comes down to being attentive um and this like really deep and intrinsic listening that can happen um when you just allow yourself to and going back to this whole ego thing or like the mind when you disconnect from like fear-based sort of like ego of like I should be here or like I should be in that room but I'm not or like do you know what I mean all of these thoughts stepping back from that and just being like what happens when I just like tune in and listen um so yeah I think it's like really really nice to sort of like um muse on that for a while mm, and last point <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> this is, was such a great conclusion but also like you know <laughs> it's a great conclusion but i'm gonna add <laughs> a new conclusion <laughs> when i think about ibaim i often think about because perhaps like a year ago when we met mm -hmm. um ibaim spoke to me about uh his mother and son mm -hmm. and I, I i found lots of uh, echo to my own mm -hmm. um relationship to to my uh, biological family mm. but it's also like okay when you are in this state of attentiveness mm. it is also acknowledging that this state of attentiveness you know in one lifetime lifetime some beings don't get to have this pocket yeah. of time for attentiveness what mm. do you do also about it mm. Mm. Uh, yeah i wasn't thinking about your mom in particular i was thinking <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about uh, being like my yeah. like parents or like, like mode of survival that have been uh, yeah. that have had the parenting parental yeah. figure to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any um conclusions, Ibrahim? Before we uh, well, just thank you as well because uh, yeah, I appreciate all of our interactions. Um. I feel uh, very righteous and organic uh, in the sense of it's part, it is part of my growth and there isn't much of like a conflicting presence or, you know, I feel free to be myself, to talk, which is again, all that we need to live this life, not knowing what the next day will bring um and create again from a, from a place uh a place that that feels right that's it so i'm just super grateful um and i wish for you to keep on making and being great folks you know um yeah like <laughs> that's all i can say <laughs>